WAN 2.2 has released. The AI video model, the follow-up to WAN 2.1, does not disappoint in any way, at least not to me. And not only is it great, it is also open source, which means you could download it yourself if you have this set up at home. If you're a comfy UI person like I am, you can download the models and use them right away and realize all the benefits of the new model. Compared to 2.1, you've got a lot of different upgrades. Among them, things like native 1080p support. You've got built-in camera motion controls, so it understands things like pan, tilt, zoom. It's all baked in, so you don't need special LoRa's to be able to use those things, if you even know what I'm talking about. And for all of you who like to make cinematic productions with lots of action, they've got these VFX baked in. Things like fire and smoke and particles, global illumination, and stylized filters. Again, eliminating the need for extra LoRa's to make this happen on your own machine. It follows prompts excellently. It's really quite amazing along those lines. Today we're going to look at a fair amount of WAN 2.2 output that I've been playing with over the past couple of days, both their text-to-video model and their image-to-video model, 720p and 480p. And I've run all of these tests over on WaveSpeed, which I told you about before. They are a model hub that gives you API and directs to all kinds of AI models like the WAN models, Seed Dance models, Hilluo models, Kling, WAN, Flux, Hunyuan. You name it, it's here. And as I've said before, their speed is incredible and their prices are the lowest you will find for a similar service. So if you generate a lot of videos and you don't like subscriptions, some kind of solution like this is great for you because you'll only spend money on the generations that you actually do and you're gonna get a great rate and you have access to all the models, which makes it great for someone like me who's testing. And I'm gonna ask you to stick around to the end of the video because I actually have two little bonus items for you. As you can see, as we scroll through here, I've got pages and pages of tests we're certainly not going to put you through all of them, but I am going to try and show you a wide variety of examples that show off what the WAN 2.2 model can do and do a lot of side-by-side -side comparisons prompt to prompt with the WAN 2.1 model. Then you can decide for yourself if it's a major leap or not. I actually have access to all of these WAN 2.2 video models, and we're not going to be using all of them or we'd be here all day. I'm going to use the ones that you are most likely to use, which in my estimation are the text-to-video at 480p and the text-to-video at 720p, and then the image counterparts to that as well. They also have the 5B model, which is a combination of the text and image models, which is also a little bit friendlier on your local GPU. In order to be sure that I was creating prompts that do this model justice, I went to chat and I asked it to do some research on WAN 2.2 and come up with these prompts itself and really make sure it studied all the new changes and made prompts that would feature these changes. And it did a pretty good job of it. It gave me a few prompts that are just sort of general prompts that show off things like the special effects and multi-object semantics. But then I asked it, in true Bob Doyle media fashion, to come up with some silly scenarios that still highlighted all the new features of WAN but were maybe not so boring to look at. Then I asked for some surreal prompts and prompts that had to do with severe weather and various styles like animation. So let's just get into it. I'm going to go in chronological order because this was sort of a process of discovery for me. This is the first image I uploaded here of this man sitting in a restaurant booth and the prompt was man eats a plate of spaghetti with his hands making a mess all over his face. Now that was my prompt. That was not chat's prompt. This was just me experimenting before I decided I needed to go over to chat so I could write a better prompt. There are some of these clips that I won't show you because YouTube would be angry at me. But if you're in the horror or action action genre and you have been disappointed in the censorship levels of some of the commercial models, you can get away with a lot more here with Juan. That's all I'll say. So Chad had originally given me instructions in the prompt, and I think erroneously, that you would actually prompt the text of the resolution, and I found that to not be relevant. We choose the output of the video here when we actually create it. We put in the prompt, but disregarding that first odd instruction, this is an aerial camera smoothly pans over a cyberpunk neon city at night. At night. Flying car zoom past, rain reflections on wet streets, volumetric fog, and neon particle trails with protagonist in foreground. And there's the protagonist right there. So it's very good at the prompt adherence. It got virtually everything we asked for in there. Here's what it looks like at full resolution. Here's one of the silly ones that Shaq gave me. A couple sits in a picnic blanket on a park about to kiss when a third person walks by using a leaf blower that violently scatters their sandwiches and napkins into the air. The camera slowly pushes in on chaos as chaos unfolds around them, petals and mustard flying. So I think it's pretty much got most of that stuff. And here it is at full resolution. 
This was two people enter an elevator at the same time, the doors close, and they immediately launch into a surprise dance battle, etc. So it's got all the details here, except that it was actually happening when the doors open instead of when they closed. A woman in business attire rides a shopping cart like a rodeo bull through a supermarket aisle, knocking over cereal boxes as employees wave tiny cowboy hats in the background. So we do have the hats waving in the background, although she's not knocking things off the shelf yet. She is riding it. I guess that's like a rodeo bull. Here's where I start to compare the 2.1 and the 2.2 models. The prompt here was a chef in a kitchen flips an omelet so high it vanishes into a glowing vortex above the stove. He looks up, confused as astronauts and dinosaurs peek out of the portal. The camera dollies backward as toast levitates and appliances short circuit with sparks. So I've got these playing side by side. This is the 2.1 version and this is the 2.2 version on the right. Here the prompt is, a woman is playing the trumpet and a thick swarm of bumblebees come flying out of the bell of the trumpet. She's in a field of purple tulips and the camera is circling around her as she plays. This is 2.1 and this is 2.2. I'll refrain from commentary, you can make up your own mind. This is a woman's face is composed entirely of tiny ticking clocks, each showing a different time. As she speaks, the clocks spin rapidly and her voice leaves visible trails in the air like smoke calligraphy. The camera pushes in slowly and time reverses. As I read these prompts, I'll ask you to watch along the video and then you can decide which one did the better job of adherence and which one you just like aesthetically better. Now, I really hope it's not too annoying that I'm reading these entire prompts or at least most of them, but my whole point is for you to evaluate the prompt adherence. So the details are kind of important here. A train with mirror panels instead of walls moves through a forest. The reflections show cities, oceans, and fire instead of the forest around it. As it passes, Reality flickers and warps. Camera tracks alongside the surreal reflections. Very different results here between the two models. A child strolls down a city street, casually walking a fluffy cloud on a red leash. The cloud shifts shapes, dog, lion, rabbit, while passers-by float slowly upward like balloons. Camera tilts to reveal an upside down skyline above. I'm really happy with both of these outputs on this one. In a stormy sky above a gothic town, dozens of colossal human hands emerge from the clouds, adjusting the time on a floating clock tower. Each turn of the clock shifts the color and physics of the scene below. Camera zooms upward into the clouds. You be the judge. Because VO3 has brought a lot of attention to these man on the street type of AI interview things, although Juan does not do audio here, we could do some bass videos and then put lip sync on it using a different technology if you wanted to. However, what we're looking at here is prompt adherence. A cheerful reporter speaks with a farmer holding a basket of fresh vegetables. Shoppers walk by with colorful tote bags and a dog wearing sunglasses steals a carrot from one of the stalls. The camera slowly pans across the vibrant market. Now this guy over here, 2.1, did a really good job of putting sunglasses on the dog and having it steal a carrot. So sometimes, and this is not the only time that I've seen the prompt adherence be a little bit better on Juan 2.1, but you gotta kinda look at the whole overall image and see which one you like the best. Here I threw some weather at it. Commuters wade through a flooded street, knee deep in rushing water, holding briefcases and umbrellas. A man paddles by in a canoe, waving cheerfully, Camera pans slowly across the storefronts, water pouring out of the doorways. I won't read this entire prompt, but it's a big wave hitting a coastal town and disaster ensues. This one over here is crazy town. 2.2 just went nuts with this thing and I freaking love it. A serene beach moment turns tense as the ocean recedes dramatically. People stare in silence and a massive wall of water rises on the horizon. Seagulls scatter into the sky. Camera pushes in on woman's face as realization dawns. Definitely two different takes, but why I like that wall of water on 2.2 but I like the look on her face too. Now, the other thing about Juan 2.2 that I should have mentioned is that it really stresses the fact that it portrays emotion well, but Juan 2.1 didn't do too bad here. She definitely looks concerned. In fact, a little more concerned than 2.2 over there. Okay, this one's a little edgy, but it's not too bad. A crazy looking man in the subway is harassing a woman who pulls out a sharp knife. 
and stabs him deeply in the chest as he screams. I, the only reason I'm reading this is because they didn't do the blood and all the other gore stuff on these takes. But the emotion is definitely communicated here and the tenseness of the situation. I love the camera, frantic camera movement over here in one 2.2. It just seems a little bit more real, a little bit more organic, whereas this one seems a little bit more AI. Now we're finally getting into some image to video examples and we'll be mixing them up from this point on, but let's focus on a few images. Obviously, this is the first image in this particular video. And it's basically a long prompt about a sinister clown leaning forward in mid steps. Got very detailed information about how he's doing. Actually, the prompt that I used for this video was the prompt that I used to create the image, which was, it's unnecessarily complex for the video. But you get the idea, a clown is being a creepy clown and walking stealthily through the crowd and we've got all this stuff. So one 2.1 over here and 2.2 over here. A little more theme park action. This was the starting image. And once again, for the video, I used the same prompt that I used for the image, but obviously it is a roller coaster derailing and you just can decide which one seems more coherent to you it's clear that they both do some tearing and some AI stuff here, but I do believe that 2.2 has the edge with clarity and just sort of doing what I'm asking it to do and not being too scared. Like this is a little bit more in your face with the cars falling into the crowd than this is kind of vague and you just sort of have to, you know what I'm talking about. Again, this is a very long prompt, so I won't read the whole thing, but it's basically supposed to be a bear jumping out of a birthday cake at a 90 year old birthday party. So one 2.1 gives us a bear and then this man who I guess is wearing the bear suit or whatever he's doing. And uh, the problem here with one 2.2 is while it is the bear coming out of the cake, it's just a little bit too slow motion for my taste. So I use the same prompt here exactly, except that I told it to be an animated or 3D Pixar style. And we've got these two. So this is one 2.1 and 2.2 over here. Remember these were image to video processes. So I actually restyled the picture somewhere else and then brought it back in here. I think I told it to give it a sort of a Tim Burton look or a darker look, same theme, but a darker look. And we get this video here. So one 2.1 over here and 2.2 here. Now, before I give you those two bonus nuggets, we'll look at one more example here. And we've all seen this whole ASMR fruit stuff going on, mostly with VO3. So I wanted to see what Juan could do with it. And it wasn't all that impressive. These use the same prompts that I used on other platforms with VO3 to get exactly what you're looking for. But here, we're just looking to see which one follows the prompt more. We've got a very long prompt, so I won't read it to you, but it's basically talking about the position of this orange and what it's made out of, which is in this case, some sort of a jelly tank. Texture. There are details in the prompt about the sparkling water in the background, which both of them adhered to. But by and large, we've got number two here, which actually looks like an orange, and number one here, which does not. But even when I tried other fruits with just 2.2, we didn't get far enough into the animation to actually see anything fall or see the real result of what was inside. One of the limitations, if you want to call it that, which I'm sure some of you do, is that currently one 2.2 output is only five seconds. Whereas with 2.1, we can go all the way up to 10 seconds. By the way, if you're curious about this little side-by-side -side video player, this is something that I actually created for this video with no coding or no HTML. I used Minimaxes. They do audio and video AI, but they also have an agent that will create apps for you. And all I did was say to build a web interface that allows me to upload two videos and play them side by side at the same time. And after about 10 minutes of iterating and coming up with new concepts for ideas and controls, it created this for me. It's just an HTML file that you can run locally. You've got all your controls down here and you've seen it in action. Just in case you're interested, I'm going to leave a link to the project over here and you should be able to download this file for use on your own system if you want to. Of course, I could go on and on and on with examples, but hopefully I've demonstrated at least to some degree the advances in the WAN 2.2 model in terms of coherence and clarity and color and motion and camera and just the whole thing, realism in general. I'm already super impressed with it and we're just getting started. And if it rolls along and advances anything like 2.1 did with all the toys that came along with that as time went by, wow, I cannot wait to see what happens. Before you go, I wanna tell you a couple of bonus things about wave speed that might be of interest to you. Number one, in addition to all of the video models, they also have some of these video effects that you are probably well familiar with and a lot of people buy entire phone apps just so they can do these effects and so they spend their monthly subscription 20 bucks or whatever it is so they can do these effects from time to time and send them to their friends or you could just come over here when you needed them and spend a few cents and do it right here but nowhere near the price of a subscription same exact thing with image effects you've seen these included in a lot of these apps and a lot of these apps are getting them from services like this if not this one 
So why not cut out the middleman? But the other thing I want to tell you about, especially if you're really into this stuff and you like to do custom Loras and you want to be able to put maybe your own face or your own character into your text to video renderings here in the WAN 2.2 platform, hidden here in the WAN 2.1 video model section, we have this WAN 2.1 14B Lora trainer. My understanding is that the 2.1 Loras will still work with 2.2. I don't know how that could be possible, but that's what they're saying. And I've seen it work with motion Loras for sure. I just haven't done it with a character lore quite yet. But all you need to do to be able to create your own custom lore here is have a zip file with about 10 to 20 images and you upload it, give it a trigger word, and that's it. I didn't change any of this stuff and I got some pretty good results. As I record this, there is not a WAN 2.2 playground section for you to put Laura's in, but I'm sure that will come soon. But in the 2.1 models, they have this little playground area of the T to V 480p with a Laura. And here you can define a Laura that you create or another Laura on their system. And so I used their Laura creator to create a Laura of myself and then started putting myself in a few prompts like close up of Bob Juan Laura, which is the trigger word I used, smiling while picking up a kitten up off a kitchen countertop and placing it gently on the floor. Now the prompt in here, it's there, wasn't that great. This is the 2.1 model, but it did get the likeness of my face. Here's another go at it with the 720p model. The same Laura works with both the 720p and the 480 models. This time the prompt has me wearing explicitly a blue t-shirt and I put the cat on my shoulders instead. Now the 720p model seemed to do a much better job of coherence. And really for a Laura that only took 10 minutes to train on this platform, I'm super, super impressed with it. Here I'm standing on the edge of a very tall building looking down with a nervous expression as if he's contemplating a jump. Now remember this is the 2.1 model, but on this one I did say POV over shoulder so we got another view of it. We don't really see my face clearly, but you would believe that's me. I told it to have the camera dolly around the man, but that really wasn't fair for 2.1 because it's not really something that's built in. That's more of a 2.2 thing I want to test. But here we have him standing on the edge of the very tall building, looking at the busy street below, but this time I seem to be more on the sidewalk, but we do have the traffic in the background and my likeness. So if you're ready to give the 2.2 model a go and you don't have the system for yourself to run it locally, I highly recommend checking out WaveSpeed because it's cheap and it's fast and they got all the cool stuff there and it's super simple to use. If these the types of advances in AI technology that you like to learn about, well, why not subscribe to this channel? Because this is the kind of thing we do all the time. If you subscribe now, I will not look for you. I will not pursue you. But if you do not, I will look for you. I will find you. And I will...